Hello, hello! Welcome or welcome back. My name is Mackenzie and this is I'll Give You the Books. Today I'm talking about all of the books that I read over the month of September. And let me tell you, I read a lot of books. Anyone want to guess how many? Going once, going twice. Ten. I read ten books this month. Look at what happens when you are depressed and have a breakup shook. Anyways, so I'm just jumping right into it. Starting with a book that I read on my Kindle, I read House of Desire on my Kindle. This one was about a three star read for me, three and a half stars. I have to say it was not my absolute favorite. Um, Any Butcher has written two books so far. She wrote House of Deceit and House of Desire. And House of Desire is about a woman who goes on like a bachelorette style show and tries to win over the heart of the man who is the main character. Um, and he is trying to find like the spark of his desire. So there are candles rather than roses. But it's a super cute premise. I really liked it, but it just wasn't written the same way that House of Deceit was. So I was a little bit disappointed by the second book. The next book that I read was Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I loved this book. This one was so cute. I never thought that I'd be into golf like this, but I am. Wells Bell, the cutest nickname ever. I'm, I'm obsessed. I really enjoyed like the enemies to lovers slash like just the grumpy sunshine type vibes and like the fact that he cared for her even though like he didn't show it. The grumpy. It was really the grumpy for me that I just really really enjoyed. I have to say this is probably my favorite Tessa Bailey book. I've read three books by her. I've read Hook, Line, and Sinker, It Happened One Summer, and now this one, The Fangirl Down. I will say that The Au Pair Affair also just came out, and I've mentioned before, and I will say it again, I think that that one's going to become my favorite because it's a hockey romance. But for now, this was perfect. I loved the diabetes representation. I am not diabetic, so I can't tell you if it was accurate or not, but I, I think it was. It seemed pretty accurate to me based on, like, I do have a couple of friends with diabetes, and so it does seem like that was pretty accurate and well portrayed, too. So I really enjoyed that. Next up, we have The Hazelwood. If you watch my reading vlog, you will know that I did not enjoy this book. This was like a one and a half star. It started off so good. It was really, really promising. It started off and I was really interested in the premise of like Alice and which, well, I guess I should tell you about it first. So Alice has a mother and a grandmother and they never talk to her grandmother because she's like crazy or something. But her grandmother has written a bunch of stories that are really hard to find and um, eventually like her grandmother passes away and her mom goes missing and it's like she says that she's taken by like the people of the Hazelwood um, but she says to like stay away from the Hazelwood and uh, turns out that all the stories that the grandmother wrote are like true and like they're woven into society and stuff like that so she has to go and figure out to save her mom and to save herself too um all of the stories didn't enjoy it it's super cute cover the cover is adorable and i love how each of these things like corresponds to something that happened in the book so it really is like a really cool cover and a really cool design idea but the book itself was not it i'd say it was a one or a one and a half star which is really sad, but I'm hoping that somebody else is going to enjoy this. I go to book swap every month and hopefully somebody else is going to like it more than I did. And also, um, it is nominated for a Goodreads Choice Award, so a lot of other people did really enjoy it. So if you look at it and you're like, I might enjoy this, maybe you will. It just wasn't for me, and that's valid. Next up, I read The Inheritance Games because The Final Gambit was on my TBR, but I didn't remember what happened. So I read not only The Inheritance Games, but also The Hawthorne Legacy. And then 
the final gambit. So I read all three. I am very proud of myself for reading all three and actually like sticking to it. I'm the type of person who will read the first book in a series and then take a break and then come back and read the second one, take a break and then read the third one. But the third one was on my TBR for the month and I wanted to read it before the month was over and so I had to read them all back to back. And it ended up being okay. I really enjoyed it. Basically what the Inheritance Games is about is about a girl named Avery who inherits billions of dollars from this man she's never heard of named Tobias Hawthorne. And so she has to live in Hawthorne House for a year and solve a whole bunch of puzzles and riddles in order to try to like figure out what he left for her and what the hidden message is beyond the billions of dollars. And so that spans over all three of the books. And then in the final book, it concludes and all is solved, which I obviously won't mention. Next up, I want to make sure I'm doing this in order. Um, what did I read next? Next up, I read Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Leafs. I enjoyed this one. This one was okay. It was like three and a half stars. I love Chloe Lee's writing. So that one made me like just her writing style is everything and more. I love it to, to pieces. Um, but it's basically about Katerina and Christopher or like Kate and Chris and they hate each other. But Chris was kind of adopted into the family after his mother died when he was younger. And so they've grown up together. I didn't appreciate that. So they've grown up together and they've always had like a hating relationship back and forth. But Kate's parents ask Christopher to like be kinder to her and um, not like fight while Kate is back. And that turns into something a little bit more. So it's like an enemies to lovers. This one is a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew, which... I've never read it, so I can't really tell you if that was accurate or not, but I enjoyed it. It was a cute read, super fun, and it's like the perfect read for fall too. So I enjoyed that. Guys, this next book. I love Frida McFadden. Never Lie is my new favorite by her. I am absolutely obsessed. I am doing a Tuesday Tea on it, so you are going to see it if you have not already. I never know when I'm going to upload these. I do them and then, I don't know. But I did a Tuesday Tea, I'm doing a Tuesday Tea on Never Lie, so you can have more information on it there. But basically it was my book, book club read. And it's about a newlywed couple, Trisha and Ethan, who go to the house of Adrienne Howe, who is a psychiatrist, and gets snowed in over like a weekend type thing. And Trisha finds a bunch of tapes that the doctor had um, taped of like voice recordings taped of her clients and Dr. Adrienne Hall had gone missing a couple years prior and was presumably like murdered or missing or dead or something like that. And so as she goes through, she goes through and finds that there's more to the mystery than meets the eye. Very, very good book. Five stars. I loved it. And then I read The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. This one was okay. It wasn't super great and I also didn't hate it. I will say that Aaron Sterling also writes under other um, authors. She also writes as Rachel Hawkins and I think I like what she writes under Rachel Hawkins more than what I like as she writes under Aaron Sterling. But that's just my opinion. But it's okay. It was a cute book. It was super big font. It was super quick. And it was like perfect for the witchy season. So um, I would say it was a solid three stars. I didn't quite follow what was going on with the curse. And I didn't understand why the curse couldn't be solved sooner. Like, 
obviously like the, the main character gets a curse put on him and then like curses the town and they have to basically solve this curse and like reverse the curse. And obviously if the curse was reversed sooner then the book would have just been over. But I honestly didn't understand why it took so long to figure out like how to reverse the curse. So I don't know. It just like confused me I guess. I felt that it shouldn't have taken as long as it did. But it's also such a thin book. So I don't know, maybe it should have had a different premise. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I didn't love it. It was a three star read. I didn't hate it. I just didn't love it either. And that's that. And then the other book that I read on my Kindle, I read The Wingman by Stephanie Archer. And that is a three star read as well. I did do a Tuesday Tea on this one and I posted about it. But basically it is a hockey romance where um, the girl lives with the guy um, because she just got out of a relationship and needs somewhere to live and um, he is teaching her how to be a player. And so she takes lessons from him to try to be like a player and find a bunch of boys to like bounce back from her past relationship with. Um, but then ends up, he ends up getting jealous of her and all sorts of different things. And I wish I would have liked this one more than I did, but I just simply did not. I enjoyed the idea of it and I enjoyed the other two books that Stephanie Archer wrote but I just felt like the first portion of the book was repeated from other books and like other books that she's written, other books that I've read that were not written by her. Just in general I felt like it was repeated and not like new and unique and Stephanie Archer is somebody who is really new and unique so I was a little bit disappointed by that. So that's that. And then the last book is a book that I'm in the middle of and by in the middle I mean I literally just started it. I am all of 24 pages in but it is Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson and I did not reread A Good Girl's Guide to Murder but I feel like I don't have to reread it in order to enjoy this one um, but I don't really know what it's about because I just started it. Um, basically when somebody Pip knows goes missing and the police doesn't, don't do anything, Pip investigates and follows a trail of clues, but we all know how that goes. Very dangerous, very spooky. So this one I will be continuing into the month of October, but as a whole I have read, I did read 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2 on my Kindle. Yeah, so I read 10 entire books this month. Um, I hope that this month was as good of a reading month for you as it was for me. And uh, I have to say, we are back, baby. Yeah. So let me know what you read and if you enjoyed it down below. And I will see you all soon. Bye.